or good morning. It's afternoon at this point. Um, and this is going to be the first, like, uh, no. Um, first Josh Tube episode of the new year. And really, all I'm going to say is that it is basically going to be one of those one minute per segment episodes. Um, it's just going to be like, hey, this is what is in the box. Um, and it's, you know, the next nine minutes is just going to be one minute segments of what's coming. And a lot of it's, well, n nearly all of it's from last year. So um, that's the thing. Got to try and make new videos, but got to get the old ones out too. So, I was thinking that maybe I would um, read you from my prayer journal, but I've got one of those headaches this morning that, oh my god, no, not happening, not happening, bye bye. The David Lee Bible verse, 2 Kings 4, 25 through 26, so, the, so she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When she saw her, when he saw her in the distance, the man of God said to his servant, Gehazi, look, there's the Shunammite. Run to meet her and ask her, are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your child all right? Everything is all right, she said. Yay. I might have to. No? Okay. It cannot be treated otherwise. So how can God save the sinner and remain righteous? God cannot change his eternal attribute of righteousness. God taught his people in the Old Testament to anticipate a perfect and sufficient sacrifice for sin. The blood of bulls and goats symbolized the blood that would one day be shed by the perfect Lamb of God, who would lift up and take away our sins and the sins of the whole world. The blood of animals could never take away sin, but only point to the greater Lamb of God. There you go. Give up easily and strengthen me to stand firm in your word. Psalm 50, verse 15. Call upon him or me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you and you will honor me. So yeah, there you go. For those of you that have jobs, they make street bikes out of... ...laid down his life for us. In eternity we will have a ceaseless unfolding of that, that fathomless expression of boundless love. Says Lewis Chafer, for God so loved the world that he gave, the ultimate picture of the love of God is the cross of Jesus. Why such a demonstration of love? God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. 2 Corinthians 5.19 Every righteous judgment of God against sin was removed by Christ. Yeah. Good stuff. like in um, regards to um, <clears throat> the book that I was reading, Bondage Breaker, and how it teaches you to renounce stuff, and I know I ended up leaving it up in um, Vermont um, with the dressers, but that's okay, because I'm always thinking about things that I need to renounce, and I think one of the things that I need to seriously renounce I 
mean, it's nothing terrible. It's just, I'm not sure really what to call it. It's um, the whole attitude or systematic or thought process that I have to use to-do lists in order to get anything done because I don't know what of things to renounce. For Joyce Patnod, what's good? For me, please help me quit smoking again. Anyway, um, I want to follow your love because I know you want to me to be good and want to bless me with your teaching. I pray that you will open my heart to see benefits of your law. Help me to obey them faithfully so that I can dwell in confidence and with peace knowing I am living your way. Do not let me stray from your law. God's promise, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. John 14, 21. The problem is, is that I guess I'm the one person in this world that is supposed to get a tiny little bit of God, because that's all God really wants to give me, and like that's supposed to make everything that sucks in my life okay. And at this point, at 37, sorry to scare the people watching this video, but I'm done. I'm just so ready to die. I'm not going to kill myself, because who knows where the truth lies on that one. But if anyone wants to kill me, they're totally free to do so. That's Jim, what's good? Me, can you just have it all CZ? That's the repeat, and I'm done. Oh, that was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Hey there, folks. Here's what people are praying about today. Um, at 1.29 in the morning on December 9, 2011, on um, Prayer Network, the app, the iPhone app for Prayer Network. From uh, Finally Faithful in Los Angeles, California. Thank you for your prayers. My family is in crisis. Our business is failing. My daughter got raped and is on drugs because of it. Your prayers have meant the world to me. I also pray for all of you every day. God is good. God has a plan. And my phone shut off. Oh, yay. So this is for um, that Christian show, which is what a lot of stuff that I read is for. But they finally have um, the Olive Bible Reader available for, um, well, it's in the App Store for the MacBook. So um, I went and downloaded it, and we can read that now. Um, I wasn't going to read it out loud, but then I hate reading anything that could be content for a video. Does somebody want to go outside? Go get Craig. Oh, I gotta go let this dog outside. I'll turn this around so you can see. So, um, trying to start this new thing, this new thing of, like, starting my day and then, or starting my day this particular way and then seeing where it takes me. And every day it's basically going to be an experiment that I'll be adding on to and from. And what it does is it uses a, an app for the MacBook called uh, MindNode. And um, that's a way that you can take an idea and then flowchart yourself, you know. Um, flowchart the idea for yourself until you reach some sort of conclusion that I guess